All right, in this video, I just want to take a quick look at the integral test for series, and I just want to quickly discuss why it works. People ask me quite often, uh, you know, why we can do this. So I don't think it's anything hopefully too bad. It really just comes down to a pretty simple geometry argument is, is, is all it is. So again, all the integral test for series really says, so it has to, you know, your series has to satisfy um, certain conditions. I'm going to start my series at n equals 1. It could start at any, you know, any number you want to start it at. And again, the question is, does this converge? Does it converge or diverge? Okay, so that's usually the question we ask ourselves with series. And it says what we can do is we can basically look at an improper integral. And the function is based on the, you know, the terms in the series. It says we can look at this improper integral. And it says if this converges, it says if the series converges, or excuse me, if the integral converges, so it says if the integral converges, so does the series. And it says if the integral diverges, So does the series. So I'm going to not do any sort of rigorous justification, but the, the argument would be exactly the same. I'm just going to take two specific examples, and hopefully, hopefully this will convince you. So suppose we started off with the series, let's say, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And we wanted to know if that converges or diverges. Well. You may recognize this as being a P-series, and you may already know the answer, but again, we're trying to just simply illustrate this integral test. So the idea is, what we can do instead is we can look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. So I'm going to make a, a rough little graph of 1 over x squared of 1 over x squared, and 1 over x squared is just going to look something like that. You know, of course, it's also down here on the, uh, or excuse me, ooh, it's on the uh, top left side. Uh, but since we're only going from 1 to infinity, I'm not even going to mess with that part anyway. So there's 1, 2, there's 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And I'm going to kind of chop this, this integral up, and you'll see why in just a second. So you can show, you can show using you know, by integrating, we can show that this integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, uh, we can show that this is convergent. And I'll let you convince yourself of that. I'm not going to show that. But you can certainly show without too much difficulty that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared is convergent. So what that simply tells us is, it says that if you look at the area from between the line x equals 1, the x-axis, and this curve, 1 over x squared, it says if you were to add up all of that area that keeps going on forever and ever and ever, it says it's going to be finite. That's what it means to be convergent. So somehow this area underneath here is finite. Well, let's go back to our series for a second. Let me expand it out. So if we plug in n equals 1, we'll get, well, 1 over 1 squared. We would plug in n equals 2 and have 1 over 2 squared. Then 1 over 3 squared, 1 over 4 squared, etc. So the idea is we can relate the, the terms in our series to little rectangles in our, in our graph. So if you think about it, for example, okay, so 1 over 1 squared. If you think about the point on the graph, okay, so that's the x coordinate of 1. The y coordinate would be, well, 1 over 1 squared. I'm going to make a rectangle, and I'm going to extend it, though, to the left. Okay. So the area of this first rectangle, the area of that rectangle, would equal 1 over 1 squared. I'm going to do the same thing for my next term. I've got 1 over 2 squared. So again, if you think about this point on the graph, that's the point 2 comma 1 over 2 squared. And again, you could simplify this a fourth, a ninth, a sixteenth, etc. 
Well, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to make a rectangle, and I'm going to extend it to the left. And again, the area of the second rectangle, the area of that second rectangle would be exactly equal to 1 over 2 squared. I can do the same thing. I can make a, another rectangle. And the area of my third rectangle here, that's going to equal exactly 1 over 3 squared. My next rectangle would be 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 5 squared, 1 over 6 squared, etc. Well, now the argument is simple. Okay, so I know that the area underneath the curve is finite because we've shown... Well, we haven't shown, but you can show that 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared, that's convergent. So since the area underneath this curve from here to here, so if you look at that area, the area underneath there is finite. Well, notice these rectangles clearly have less area, right? If you add up the rectangles, those clearly have less area, which means the area, well, it means that if you add up the areas in the rectangles, those would also have to be finite. And, okay, so you've got this one extra rectangle hanging out. You know, so if you add up all the rectangles, so 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 3 squared, 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 5 squared, 1 over 6 squared, those are clearly finite because they have less area than a convergent integral, which therefore has finite area. So all of the areas of those rectangles, if you add them up, that's finite. Well, okay, so clearly the first rectangle, we left it out, but... Obviously, that also has a finite area. So that means that if you add the areas of all of those rectangles together, they must also be finite. That's the argument. You're just saying, again, you know, the improper integral, that has a finite area. You've got rectangles that are smaller than that. Well, they must also be finite. That's the argument. Now, a common question I often get you know, so there's, let's go back to this one real quick, 1 over x squared. People say, well, what if I, you know, what if I didn't draw my le rectangles to the left? What if I drew them to the right? Okay, so again, the area underneath 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity, that's finite. Okay, so all the area underneath here is finite. Well, okay, so you could certainly make your rectangles pointing off to the right. You could make them pointing off to the right. Okay, so now your first rectangle. The first rectangle, that would have an area of 1 over 1 squared. Your next rectangle would have an area of 1 over 2 squared. Your next rectangle would have an area of 1 over 3 squared, etc. Okay, so... If you draw your rectangles to the right, though, to me now the result is, well, it's just simply not clear, okay? I don't know what's happening in this case. Again, I know that the area underneath the curve is finite because we have a convergent, we have a convergent improper integral. But now if I add up the areas of my rectangles, the areas of the rectangles um, are larger than this finite area. Okay, well, that means two things. It means they could still be finite if we add them all up, or it, they could be, you know, to where they're sufficiently big enough to where they're actually, uh, to where they diverge, to where they add up to no, a non-finite number. So this is the point. You're just drawing the rectangles in a clever way. If you make them to the right, I don't know, you know. I know the area underneath is finite, but these are bigger, so I don't know what happens. But if I, if I draw them to the left, they say, oh, okay, now it's crystal clear that they have to be smaller. Therefore, they will be finite as well. So that's the basic argument. However, if you wanted to show, for example, that a series is divergent using this, this, uh, this integral test. So now let's look at the improper integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And 1 over x looks very similar to 1 over x squared, at least the, the portion in the top right. It doesn't get quite as small, quite as fast. And we can show that if we compute from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, this actually equals infinity, which says it is divergent. 
Okay, so now if you look at all this area underneath the the curve 1 over x, it actually says if you add up all that area, it says it has an infinite an infinite area. Somehow it's it, it is getting small, but it's not getting small enough fast enough. Okay, well we can use the same argument here. Well, almost the same argument. In this case, I would want to make my rectangles to the right. Okay, so if I if I now extend my rectangles to the right, so again, let's see, let's expand out the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. That's 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, etc. Well, this first rectangle would have an area equal to 1 over 1. My second rectangle, if I extend it over, that would have an area of 1 half. If I extend my third rectangle over, that's going to have an area of 1 third. And now we can use a very similar argument. We know that the area underneath the curve is infinite, since we have an, uh, a divergent integral. We know that the area underneath the curve is infinite. Well. All of my boxes, clearly the area corresponding to the, to the boxes is even larger. Well, if it's even larger, we can conclude simply that the, if we add up the areas of all the boxes, those will also have to be, uh, it'll have to be infinite. It'll have to be divergent. So basically we've given a little argument here just by using geometry that if we if we look at from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, those values have to be greater than the number you get when you take from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And I say a number, I shouldn't really say a number because it's not a number at all. Uh, it's, it's infinite. So again, just by using this simple geometric argument, we could argue that this series is also infinite. Now, the same argument, you could have drawn your rectangles to the left. You could have drawn them all to the left. But in that case, I would simply just say, well, I know that my, my rectangles, if I drew them to the left instead, then they would all be smaller. They would all be smaller. Then it's not clear what happens in that case. Okay, so again, we know that So 1 over x, again, we know that the area underneath that curve is infinite. But if I drew my rectangles to the left instead, if I drew them to the left, well, you know, now it looks like, you know, the if we add up the values associated with our series, okay, I, I can't make a clear judgment call, okay? So, yeah, if we if we just looked at these boxes, it's clearly less than the area underneath the curve 1 over x, okay? And then we have to add this extra bit in. But it's not clear because the area underneath the curve is infinite. If we add up the areas of the boxes, we can't immediately say, well, you know, they could be infinite, they could be finite. It's just simply inconclusive that way. So that's the basic argument with the integral test. I said I was going to do it quickly, and I know I've taken a bit longer. So, But again, that's the basic idea. If you draw the boxes in a clever way, you can always argue based on whether your integral converges or diverges. You can give a simple argument that shows that the terms in the series will either be... Uh, smaller or larger, and and again, you can always make the boxes, you can draw the boxes in s such a way so that it's smaller than a convergent integral, or you can draw the boxes in a way that's larger than a divergent integral. Okay, so that's the idea with the integral test for series. You're just, you're just making a basic geometry argument, hey, the areas of the boxes has to be smaller than something finite, or you're making the argument that the areas of the boxes is larger than something that you already know is infinite.